Today I have a first on the channel. A tool company is making power adapters. DeWalt has decided to get into the power adapter market and also this kind of cool battery charger. It looks like they decided to stick with the smaller wattage adapters and didn't branch out to the 100 watt range yet. Although the battery pack claims to be able to supply that, so we'll have to check that and more out. They actually printed 49.5 watts on the packaging for a power adapter, which is oddly specific. We'll have to test that claim too. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. Let's get into this small adapter. The first obvious thing is the more retail friendly packaging. The plastic window so you can see what you buy. A bit more plastic than some, but there aren't any plastic wrappings on the adapter so it's an easy open item. There is no user manual so the back of the box represents the instructions. Overall, it does feel like a solid adapter with the little rubber baby buggy bumpers on the sides for protection. This adapter says it's patented for the location of the USB ports and it doesn't block other outlets. I can see this being important in some places but most of the time job sites are using extension cords so maybe doesn't matter. The 49.5 is almost identical to the smaller adapter but it adds more watts and some more advanced charging features. It is quite a bit larger for the wattage of the adapter and it looks like the whole design doesn't block any ports mantra was abandoned here. The 65 watt adapter is in a kit with a battery charger and a cable. The charger is a black box. It looks like this one is a few screws short of being a complete product. For a tool class device, no ruggedization and it doesn't even have folding plugs, so something went wrong on this one. It looks like this is manufactured by someone else though. The cable that comes with the kit is a 100 watt 5 amp USB-C cable. This will go into the next round of USB cable testing. It looks like January 2023 for that one, so get subscribed not to miss it. The battery charger is the main attraction to this kit. It is a very compact and useful tool for both charging and discharging and is compatible with the 20 volt DeWalt battery collection. It has a few basic indicators on the top and they could do with a little more information here, but it's good enough. The back has a USB-A and a USB-C port. The USB-C port is labeled as 100 watts in or out. I'll get more detail on this later on. A common theme with all these adapters is they have safety listings, which I always like to see. Even the battery adapter has a listing. These adapters do not share the same listing as they're all contract manufacturers. The smaller adapters are ETL, while the 65 watt is UL. As we saw, the smaller adapters are made by e Affiliate, and the 65 watt adapter are made by Channel Well Technology. The 65 watt adapter packaging weighs 145 grams and the power adapter weighs 138 grams. The cable weighs 33 grams, and the battery adapter weighs 134 grams. The packaging is heavy, but it's just a cardboard box, so it is recyclable. The 12.5 watt packaging weighs 32 grams, and the power adapter weighs 46 grams. The 49.5 watt power adapter packaging weighs 36 grams, and the power adapter weighs 141 grams. This is heavy, but again, rugged. For a size comparison, these are all quite a bit larger than the Anchor Nano 2 65 watt shown here. In reality, I'm not so sure these would be even more capable of withstanding abuse versus the Anchor either, but at least the smaller adapters have multiple ports. During testing, these adapters had reasonable idle power consumption. The smaller adapters for their extra size did not bother with any significant AC line filtering though, so the noise on the idle mode is on the higher side. The 65 watt is a bit quieter in that condition at least. The 12.5 watt adapter is a 5 volt only device. The 49.5 watt and 65 watt devices add USB power delivery modes. I found that they supply 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed voltages. The 49.5 watt adapter adds QC modes on the USB A port so it can supply up to 12 volts on this port as well. These power adapters all lack a programmable power supply or PPS mode to adjust the output voltage. So these will not provide the fastest possible charge to some devices like Samsung phones. iPhones use the normal PD modes though. Once we take this up to the full power operating mode, it seems fairly standard. The DC voltage is stable and they each deliver the claim rated power no problem. Next, we'll see what happens when I overload each of the devices. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. It looks like the 65 watt power adapter will go off at 76 watts and it recovers after removal of the load. Not bad. 
The other devices tripped at 14 watts and 37 watts for the 12.5 and 49.5 watt devices, respectively. The 49.5 watt has independent outputs. If you watch the channel a lot, you know what is coming. Power factor correction. The 65 watt elephant in the room. If this channel does nothing else, maybe someone will make a 65 watt adapter with PFC. Obviously these adapters don't have this. On the lower wattage, it isn't expected, so these, as expected, have rather large peaking graphs, not following the sinusoidal shape of the yellow line, which would be the ideal shape for all the lines. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as effectively as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The 65 watt adapter is absolutely pathetic when compared with a PFC enabled adapter with the same wattage. With electrical rates getting more expensive, the difference of just this adapter can be three to $10 per year with 2022 rates for residential customers. This is assuming it's always charging something though. All of these power adapters met the claimed Department of Energy 6 efficiency level and the idle power level for their respective tiers. With the larger size of these adapters relative to their power levels, the surfaces stayed within a reasonable temperature range during operation. The output voltages from all of these power adapters were within the USB specifications and stayed strong during all tests. When it says 20 volts, you get 20 volts. The battery adapter thing is probably the most interesting part of this whole bunch. And actually this is probably the one thing DeWalt should sell as an independent item and have a few more options, more ports, different functions, but it looks like you have to get the whole kit. I know I don't want the 65 watt adapter. Anyway, the battery adapter strapped onto a 162 watt hour 20 volt DeWalt compatible battery pack here gives you a little blinking light to indicate that it powered up. Instantly, the ports are awake and the power is available. It looks like these stay awake if the battery's installed. This means the pack will drain if you leave it plugged in, but the good thing is the battery is removable. Let's power it up. First, the 100 watt USB-C port. It has the PD modes mentioned earlier and can do the full 100 watts no problem. It overloads at 106 watts. The neat thing is this port is totally independent of the other port. So the 12 and a half watt USB-A port works at the same time at full power without interrupting the USB-C port. Nice, this is actually really useful. I'm not reviewing this as a power bank, so no efficiencies on this today. The device does not work as a UPS. It gets rather angry if you try and do that actually. It charges at about 65 watts maximum. So I understand why the 65 watt adapter is supplied with the kit now. Dream features would be a non-interruptible USB output, an extra USB-C port, maybe 30 watts, and a more advanced display. I like the concept here though. This will charge from any USB voltage. I tried with several adapters, including larger and smaller ones. This adapter that puts out 9 volts and 20 watts, no problem. The DeWalt 12 and a half watt 5 volt only device, no problem. It will charge slower, but it will charge regardless of how you plug it in. I like this a lot too. The best thing about this is that the battery is replaceable and interchangeable. So when the pack is tired, you swap another one in. You don't have to wait for the whole power bank to charge up. This is very useful. I can see this creeping into some projects. If the price point was a little lower and if it was sold independently, they would be much more compelling. I will have to test this as a power bank at some point too. Okay, let's take a look at some data. The 12 and a half watt power adapter isn't anything impressive. It is fairly high on the AC side, harmonic distortion, the power factor is low, and it really isn't doing anything special here. It does deliver the rate of power it claims on the DC side, and it does work as a power adapter. The 49.5 watt continues this trend. The power numbers just aren't very impressive. This on its own is a chart topper and a loser though, since I don't have any other 49.5 watt power adapters. The 65 watt adapter continues the trend, even from a different manufacturer this time. This thing is just not going after an efficient, or clean power supply design. It functions, but it is very low by comparison. I like the battery charger. This is really the win of the whole lot. USB power, interchangeable battery packs, the ability to use larger packs for more runtime. I actually can see this thing getting a decent amount of use. I may build an adapter though to get more voltage out of it to make it even more useful for like soldering iron applications. In comparison with other power adapters, these aren't fantastic. The efficiency in the real world mode is worse. The AC noise and power factor are worse. The DC voltage is stable though. It seems like no one makes a power adapter that can do both of these things. I have to stick with the Anchor or Amazon for the 65 watt category. And for 30 watts, 
Well, there's a whole video on that. On the idle graph, these adapters are okay. No class leaders, but not wasting a ton of energy either. The quality is bad on the lower wattage adapters. The 65 watt is decent. They meet the idle requirements for the Department of Energy 6 idle requirements, which is nice to see. Really, no complaints on that side. On the average power consumption graph, the alternating current power quality of these devices takes very low positions. These adapters aren't particularly efficient, which is a shame since the build quality seems reasonable. Okay, let's talk about power adapters. These things are kind of expensive. If you can find them, at the time of writing, the 49.5 watt is out of stock everywhere. The kit with the battery charger, I understand being a bit more at $100, but it would be nice if it came with a little better of a power adapter. The 12.5 watt is good enough of a power adapter to get you by, and the ports are at odd angles because they could, I guess. I think DeWalt should contact Anchor or Ugreen for their next round of power adapters to hopefully get something a little better. In terms of the battery module, this is a nice piece of kit. I like the way it operates and the fact that the battery can be changed out. This sets it apart from other fixed power banks. I'll have to do some tests to see how this does as a power bank efficiency wise. So in a nutshell, if you wanna charge all of your devices and have it cost a little more to do so, then get yourself some DeWalt power adapters. I think they went with function over efficiency here, making them a little more rugged for job sites and sacrificing features and efficiency on these. Okay, time to apply some stickers. These are tested and on the database. You can take a look at how they stack up. Oh, these do not stick to these weird surfaces well. Thanks for watching. Next week, I have no idea what the plan is. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I mean, not for next week though. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Bye for now.